All right, welcome back everybody. This is part four of the Bezier grass series. In the last video, we added some depth to our uh, grass through shading, but it still is ultimately a two dimensional surface. And so when looked at from certain angles, it effectively disappears. And this is a problem they had when uh, developing the grass for Ghost of Tsushima as well. And their solution was to tilt the grass slightly when viewing it from certain angles so that it was harder to look at it edge on. So if we go ahead and do that here, set this to 1.2. Now you can see that despite looking at it from the same, same angle, it's got a bit of um, thickness to it. And now, kind of no matter what angle I look at it from, it appears to have some thickness. It looks normal when viewed along the length of the grass. But as I rotate to the side, it tilts. Uh, it's very subtle, uh, but it tilts to create an illusion of thickness. I can get to an angle where it's invisible, but only if I put my head clipped through the ground. So when viewed from above the ground, I can't really see it from that angle. And just to kind of show off what's going off going on here a little stronger, I'm going to go ahead and crank this up. Uh, so you can see that when I view the grass along the edge or along the uh, the length, that nothing is happening. But as I rotate around, it is pushing the vertex that's nearest me downward to uh, kind of create the illusion of thickness. And, um, so the way that this works, first we need to be able to tell which edge is nearest to us. So we're going to start by looking at our texture coordinates subtracted by 0.5 and we're also going to take the camera direction and we are going to transform that into instance and particle space because we don't care what direction the camera is looking in with respect to the world, we care what direction it's looking with respect to our blade of grass. And we're gonna grab the green vector of that and take the dot product. So when we look at this, we get this. And so depending on whether I'm looking at it from one side or the other, I can effectively mask out one edge or the other for this effect. Now I'm also grabbing the absolute value of our um, green channel of our camera direction vector and I'm using this to control with a little more fine accuracy the angle that I want this effect to fade in and out. So this is just giving me a little bit more control. I can control the contrast for how quickly this effect fades in and out. Uh, you could put more controls in here if you want, but the end result is that uh, we have an effect that is turned off when we're looking along the length of the blade, starts turning on as we look along the edge, and then turns off as we rotate around, and then flips to the other side. Then I'm subtracting 0.5 from that, just to make sure that all of my uh, offset is happening in the downward direction. Then we're multiplying it by our tilt amount, so I'll set that back to 1.2. Then we are multiplying that by a mask that varies along the length of the grass. So we can see T here, remember this T represents the position along the length of the blade of grass. So the tip here is uh, zero, and then along the length it goes towards the full value. And then as we go back towards the base of the grass here, it starts to go back towards zero. In this case, I'm not letting it go all the way to zero. I still want the base of the grass to thicken somewhat, but not completely. And the result of this, if we go ahead and maybe crank this back up, if I disconnect this, you'll see that um, by moving all of the grass position, uh, we're making you know it look like a, a ribbon. But by multiplying the um, you know, a value based off of the length, we can taper off the blade of grass back at the tip again, as well as reduce the strength of the effect at the base of the blade of grass. So uh, let's go ahead and back 1.2. Next, so this controls um, how strong the effect is being applied to what part of the blade of grass, depending on the view angle. Next, we need to determine what direction we want to push the vertex in. I've chosen to push the vertex in the direction of its normal 
So I've gone ahead and this is just our normals from the previous video. Uh, moving that down into a named reroute node and I'm grabbing that over here. I'm multiplying that by 101 because I don't want the um, the normal to, or I don't want the vertex positions to be shifted along the width of the blade of grass, just um, on the, uh, the x and the y direction. And then multiplying that to get us our final value, which um, won't look like much unless I take an absolute value maybe. Depending on what angle I'm viewing the grass from, um, this effect is changing. And then at the tilt, uh, so I'm just using a named reroute node to take that tilt amount, add it back to our world position offset before finally transforming it to instance and particle space. And so the end result here is that our grass looks more thicker, uh, more thick and three-dimensional than it otherwise would. So here I have a bunch of grass, and what we'll find is when we view our grass from along the length, it looks pretty thick, but when we view it along the edge, it doesn't look thick anymore, right? So this is what this will help us solve. And if we go ahead and set this to 22, now you can see our grass looks substantially fuller when viewed from the side. All right, that's that. That's all I have for this video. Uh, let me know what else you'd like to see uh, in this series. But until next time, thanks for watching.